The second minister is gone from Cabinet in less than a month. Mecca Faitari has been stood down from her ministerial positions but will remain as the MP for Ikaroa Rafati following an investigation into an incident in her Gisborne office. The Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says Ms Faitari has lost her confidence while Ms Faitari says she contests parts of that report. Now for more analysis on this we can go to PR Voss and former National Press Secretary and political commentator Matthew Hooten. Good evening to you. Good evening. Two MPs in two weeks. I guess we can't really talk too much, Matthew, about the incident itself uh, until that report comes out and, and we can see what the detail of the incident. Uh, but how about the timing? It's a day after Women's Suffrage Day. It's a day before the Prime Minister's trip to the United Nations. I guess if she wasn't travelling tomorrow, we might have had another Bad News Friday. Uh, well, yes, the timing is deeply cynical, and that's now become a pattern for Jacinda Ardern's government, that um, bad news is, is dropped at times which are inconvenient for the government, and in this case, when there are many other stories around. There's nothing new here. There's no new information that the Prime Minister has provided uh, us publicly. Well, apart from the fact um, that, that, that she is, uh, she's standing down, like a fighter from Cabinet. Sure, but in terms of the, the um, information around the incident... Radio New Zealand had all this information, reported it more than um, three weeks ago. And the Prime Minister is saying the matter still is um, unclear, uh, is disputed. And so therefore this can really only be seen as a cynical stunt to divert attention from the Tax Working Group's proposal to tax people's uh, KiwiSaver accounts, to tax people's retirement savings. Uh, and of course the other unpopular uh, initiative that was announced today, this plan to compensate tea users, which will also be unpopular. And uh, we, we are seeing a cynical government um, with its timing. Uh, each government is, tends to be more cynical than the one before is one of my rules of politics, and we're seeing that again. Well, I was going to challenge you on that because uh, I, this is nothing new in the sense that uh, National had its fair share of problems. We had Kate Wilkinson, Phil Heatley, uh, I think at one stage Judith Collins had to go from Cabinet. Um, it's, sure. it's a bit the same. Sure, and it's just the timing of this announcement. I think the Prime Minister has reached the right decision here. She's taking a hard line against violence in the workplace. Uh, she has faced down elements uh, within the Maori caucus, uh, including Willie Jackson, who tends, obviously, um, to have a more liberal attitude towards violence than what the Prime Minister has. She was certainly taking no prisoners today. What did you make of that announcement? She appeared to be strong uh, and fairly straightforward in her approach. Sure, and and uh, they needed that. Um, this was a bad news day. You know, those tax working group proposals will be deeply unpopular. Uh, the government, if it really wants to uh, put to the uh, New Zealand people the suggestion that their KiwiSaver accounts should be taxed for capital gains, uh, that other retirement savings should be taxed for capital gains, you know, they will obviously lose the elections. They went to um, the people with those proposals. So this is a very controversial day. Uh, and similarly, you know, you do a poll and ask New Zealanders what they think of tea users being compensated by their taxes and they're not going to like it. So these three bad news um, initiatives all done on the day. Um, you know, and then next week, of course, the Prime Minister will be doing the talk shows, the comedy shows in um, the United States. And I think you know, New Zealanders will enjoy that. And the Prime Minister will hope that we forget about Mecca Fattery, that we forget about the proposal to tax KiwiSaver, uh, and that we forget about the P compensation issue. If, if, just before you go, Matthew, I want to ask you about quotas. Obviously, we know there's an ideological difference here between National and Labor, uh, to say nothing of the Greens, uh, on, on the idea of having a 50-50 representation in their caucus and, and, and women in Parliament. Do you think that system, in a sense, makes the decision easier for the Prime Minister on who will replace Mecca Fighteri now, uh, or, in a sense, has the policy hamstrung them? Uh, in the, look, in, it, a case could be made that at the last uh, election it was easier for a woman candidate in the um, uh, women candidates in the Labour Party to get selected than it was for the male ones. That doesn't apply to Claire Curran who was disgraced over the um, Derek Hanley appointment. Of course the government has yet to release the secret emails behind all that including the ones that involved Jacinda Ardern. Maybe we'll, we'll get them later tonight if the day is going. Um, but I, you know, in the case of Claire Curran, there's no gender issue. She's been a um, MP for a considerable amount of time. I don't think there's a gender issue here at all. These were two ministers that had to be sacked. Uh, if the Prime Minister appoints...
points on merit uh, to, to replace these ministers. The first person off um, off the bench will be Louisa Wall, the MP for Manurewa, Maori woman, uh, and of course a very accomplished legislator. She um, was the one that got through from opposition the private members' bill on marriage equality, and is quite clearly by far the most qualified person. Yes, she seems to be the cabinet. knocking on the door for Absolutely. some time, and um, yeah, you're not Absolutely. the only one there who's uh, who's recommended uh, that she get the next call up. But thank you for your time, Matthew Hooten, and that uh, analysis on what's happened at Parliament today.